Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is James. First of all, I just want to say thank you for all the positive feedbacks and honest feedbacks that I received from my previous uh, video. A lot of people say that my face was looking a little bit too serious. I do apologize for that. It's just because I was so nervous on camera. I, as you can see, I never done this before. Anyway, um, today episode, I'm going to talk about pest control, in particular, thrips. So what is thrip? Thrips is, oh my God, they are beyond this world. Like honestly, if I have to rank among all the pests, I would say thrip is the worst. They are expensive to treat. They are so resilient and they just don't die. I don't know why I did everything, but they just cannot die. But anyway, I found a really efficient way of how to control them. Thrips are mother nature's period. They come in once a month and um, it could be a little bit earlier than that actually. And oh my God, they are seriously the green earth destruction. I think the very first step of controlling thrips is that how to identify them. I made the mistake. Now, not really my mistake, but I didn't know what thrips look like. My problem was starting last year. I believe it was in October. Now, obviously, if you click on this video, I'm sure that you must have experienced thrips problem. Otherwise, just Google it, guys. Google is free. And uh, other, anyway, I'm gonna include a video or maybe a photo over here or there that you can see what the rips look like. They look like dirt, literally. They look just like dirt. It's just so hard to identify. And they're like this teeny tiny thing that you have to... Some people, they actually use magnifying glass um, to see them. Now, I don't need to because I already know what they look like. So I know what to look for. Now, this little dirt thing moves, obviously. Now, they don't move a lot. They don't. They The adult one. The younger one, ooh, they move fast. Her. But yeah, the adult one, they barely make any move because they just want to suck all the juices out of your plant, in particular your leaves, right? Their lifespan, here's a crazy thing, and this is what I hate so much, is that on the internet, they gave you so much information about thrips. What information is reliable? You just don't know. I don't know. I didn't know. They all said, okay, well, treating thrips can take only like a month. Mm, that's not true. It takes a lot longer than that because thrip lifespan is anywhere between 30 to 45 days and um, from the egg stage to the adult stage took about two weeks when they are an adult they basically would lay eggs so the way they do is that they use their mouth scrape out the leaf tissues suck the juices out and then they lay their eggs in there um, so they can lay anywhere between two to ten eggs and throughout their life cycle, um, among the 30, 45 days whatsoever, they can lay anywhere between 300 to 400 eggs. Now that's a huge amount of eggs that we have to deal with. This is a funny thing because thrips actually more like an outdoor pest. They do not like indoor plants because they love the pollens and the flowers and this and that, all the soft little juicy leaves or the soft tissues um, from the flowers. So they love that kind of things, but I don't know why, especially in Canada, in Toronto this year, they have been, no, sorry, not this year, from last year, it has been heavily attacked by thrips. Every plant owner that I know, they experience with thrips problem. Now my theory, obviously this is not fact or anything, so don't comment me for it, um, is that, you know, the demand was just so high and everyone wanna grab a plant and then obviously nurseries, they know that, and then they just don't have enough time to probably quarantine their plants and that is the main reason why thrips just getting everywhere. Thrips is the worst when it comes to um, damaging your plant because first of all they can carry viruses. If you look it up they can carry uh, oh, I don't know it's like tomato viruses and that is extremely bad for your plant. The damage doesn't look good. It's not like mealy. Uh, they do suck out the juices from your plant and it looks the plant look kind of like funny uh, looking. Uh, spider mite suck out also suck out the juices from your plant but only the color looking fading and then you get like little dots here. But anyway I'm talking about thrips. Here. Thrips damage. You will see odd um, shape on your leaves, right? You see all these patches, and then the new growth will be disoriented, or even they don't even have the chance to actually properly grow. They will just drop because there's no nutrition or anything. <laughs> 
provided for them because thrips have already been sucking out all of that. Now thrips love to come back to the same plant unfortunately but also fortunately in a sense um, they love say for example this one stair right here as you can see um, I'm gonna show you footage later uh, of the damage that's been done to my beautiful Thai constellation. So they love to come back to this particular new leaf and I found that it just come back there. And same with my some other plants. They love to come back to the same plant. Do they travel? Absolutely, a hundred thousand percent. They can fly anywhere in your house. Net. They said that oh, thrips cannot fly so far or so high. Mm, not entirely true. I'm gonna be honest here with you. So I have plants obviously in my living room and also in my bedroom as well. And guess what? Thrips are everywhere. Even the one that I have in my IKEA cabinet they somehow got in there as well. I don't know why, don't ask me. But right. The problem here is that it takes only one of them to reproduce the whole population. Yeah, you heard that right. It takes only one of them to produce the whole army population to eat your plants. So that's one of the main reasons why you cannot permanently eliminate them. Now, if you have like one or two plants, obviously easy peasy, keep looking at them and then you can deal with them. Um, every single day right but I have like up to a hundred plants and it's just so so hard to deal with them um, continuously but I'm trying my very best guys so bear with me now a lot of people ask me oh James I, I saw one or two thrips on my plants is that is that like what is that considered now unfortunately I have to break this down to you if you see one or two thrips on your plants very high chance they either already lay eggs on your plants or there's more um, coming from all the plants around your collection there. So I hate to break this down to you, but you already have an active infestation. Okay, now let's talk about dealing with them and then we'll talk about prevention later. Now to talk about treating them, as I mentioned earlier, they love to come back to the same plants. So does thrips have a particular plants that they like? Absolutely. As I said, they love soft tissues plants so that their mouth can just scrape through them and then suck the juices out. Um, so in particular, Monstera, Skindapsis, Begonia, Anthurium, even Anthurium, yes. Philodendron, you know, all the soft tissues leaves. They don't like hard, hardy leaves. Say for example, ZZ or snake plants. The tissues of the leaves are extremely hardy, so they don't like it. Um, Personally, I don't know if you experience with your ZZ or your snake plants as well. Now, that includes Hoyas, but there are some theories from some other people they experience uh, thrips with their Hoyas collection. Personally, I haven't experienced any thrips problem with my Hoyas. My Hoyas are doing just, just well. It had some Millie's issues earlier, but uh, there was never thrips. But succulents. I'm so upset that my beautiful string of pearls and my other succulent have been affected by thrips and you know I thought that oh yeah they are succulents so they must be very hardy and stuff like that and thrips cannot get into them that's actually wrong and that was my mistake my bad um, so yeah unfortunately my string of pearls and my succulent has been suffering from thrips for a long time all right I'm so sorry I walked through all of this for nothing so let me um, talk about my own personal experience and how I deal with them because that's what you came here for so basically I as I said I, it, I had the active infestation starting from October last year and uh, so I tried every single way guys I tried every single way that I found on the internet some people said okay you're gonna spray them and then you're gonna take the roots out wash the roots wash the soil and uh, quarantine your plants and yada 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 guess what I did all of that I, I it was a philodendron now I can't Pedatium, something like that. I, oh, sorry, I can't pronounce the words. Um, so anyway, I treated that plant with every single possible way in order to correct it. It was a beautiful, beautiful plant. I loved it so much. It's so cute. And um, did it help? No. Threads still come back. Oh my God. I don't know what else do I have to do. I spray them, wire off the leaves uh, from the top to the bottom, front to the back, sorry. And then um, I even take the roots out, wash the roots, uh, and I dip it in 50% uh, hydroperoxide with water. I dip it in there to, it, to kill all the eggs or the larvae or whatever, whatnot that fruits may carry. And then I put it in 
back into fresh soil. I don't, I discard all the old soil. I use fresh soil. I even um, put it in a plastic bag, a sandwich plastic bag, because I'm afraid. Oh my god, what if they come back? What if? What if? So anyway, I put it in a plastic bag and everything. And then I thought, okay, well, you know, I I went to the extreme way. I did everything that I possibly could, and it must be okay now. Mm, no, it wasn't. So it was. It, it came back unfortunately after like three or four weeks you know the lot the whole life cycle that i mentioned earlier uh so they did come back they did and uh, i was so upset i was so devastated at that very moment i still haven't checked my other plants because i thought in my head i don't know why i thought thrips are just similar with muleys they can't travel far because remember i said earlier i read on google and then they said oh yeah thrips cannot travel so far mm, that was wrong they got into every single plant that I own, every single one of them. And in particular, my begonia was covered in thrips, was covered in thrips. Literally every new bud, every new leaves, there are thrips everywhere. And then when I turn, when I flip the back of my uh, begonia, the leaves, it just black. It was like all these little dirt just like moving around. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is so bad. And at that moment, I actually did think about throwing the whole plant out because this is, it's not gonna come back um, when it is that heavily infe infested. Same thing with my uh, skin depths as Exotica. Uh, they, they were just covering thrips and they have to trim a whole lot back. I have this long, beautiful trailing, um, full looking skin depths as Exotica and it was my pride and joy, but I had to cut them down because thrip was just everywhere and then the leaves just keep dropping. And then in my head, I was actually thinking that, oh, because the season changed. So that's why the leaves are dropping. My God, what an idiot I am. Absolutely idiot. I was so gutted. But anyway, here is what I did. Okay, so as I said, do not remove the soil. Do not wash the roots whatsoever because you're just further stressing your plant out. What I did was I obviously wipe off the leaves with soap and neem oil, just a little bit. Just basically wipe it off, whatever thrip was there. Then I spray them with anol um, from the safer brand. Now you have to go for NO because thrips, they are extremely resilient. If you just use neem oil or horticulture oil or anything that is too soft for them, it's not going to do anything to thrips, I'm afraid. So you have to go with the big gun here. Use and all. At that time, I was with this company called Grow Live. I was recommended. And then I, um, I didn't know how to use good beneficial insects earlier. I never used that in my life. And so I contacted Grow Live and then they recommended me uh, with some mites, paratory mites. Um, did it work? No, it didn't work. So if you listen or if you watch YouTube, YouTube channels, uh, videos from other YouTubers about plants and they recommend it use mites, no, don't do it. Because I, I, wouldn't, I, I shouldn't say don't do it. You could do it if you have a very, very mild infestation and you caught it early, you definitely can. It's great for prevention. Oops, there you go. You know now how to prevent threats. Um, but if you use it for treating an active case, it's not gonna work, unfortunately. And you just actually f uh, let the threats repopulate and generate a lot faster. So my recommendation, if you could, because this is not a cheap option, is that you can get uh, Aureus. Um, I will show you a footage of what Aureus look like and what they do. So they are literally the enemy of thrips. They would, they, they, it, it's so funny because they actually design just exactly like how thrips design. Um, they are bigger than thrips. They do have wings and they are vicious. They would go and hunt for every pest. Thrips is definitely their most favorite. And then they also hunt for mealies, young mealies, aphids, all those sort of things, whatever smaller than them, they'll eat them. Yeah, so Aureus, they are not cheap, unfortunately. So Grow Lift price for, for, um, for them, I believe it's about $130, $124 at the tax. Um, but right now I am going with Coppert, which I'm gonna show you what they look like later on. Fortunately, Aureus lifespan is extremely short and you know, our indoor environment is not great for them to repopulate. So you do need to reapply them after. So as I said, their lifespan is only two weeks. So at the time, Back then, in October, I used uh, twice, and I thought in my head, okay, well, this should resolve the problem. And um, no, it wasn't. It did help me 90%, though, I should have said. It did help me tremendously. Like, 
There are days that I would wake up and then I choose, I see no thrips anymore. Um, some of my plants that have been heavily infected, like the begonia or the philodendron or the monstera, it was heavily infected by thrips. But then there are days that when I checked back, there was nothing. And I was so happy, I was so relieved. Um, and I was thinking in my head, okay, well then no problem is gone. No, it wasn't. <laughs> they regenerate and then they repopulate their whole uh, army again it was a whole winter thing and then you know obviously covid christmas so the company decided not to ship out uh bugs anymore which hmm, kind of like sucks for me but understandable then i had to wait all the way until uh, january and i actually just started to reapply aureus I, this is a trick this is a cost saving trick for poor z like us um i order Aureus for two weeks as I said because that that is their lifespan for the third week I basically use Anno after the Aureus die I make sure they're all dead before I use this so I would wash the leaves and I would spray Anno on all my plants like literally soak them in Anno soap to really make sure threads don't come back the eggs the larvae the pupa all those sort of things I want to make sure they're all dead oh my gosh now this so far, it's my second application uh, for Aureus. It's been working pretty well. I do notice that thrips do come back every now and then. Um, just actually last week, I found three or four of them did come back on my plants. It wasn't like a crazy infestation like before. So things got to that. And you know, you manually can just remove them because they are just dirt. So just don't go for oh my god let me look for the spray bottle let me spray this down no don't do it please don't do it if you see them just physically remove them so easy it's not gross or anything they're not like mealy mealy is a little bit gross but thrips they are so clean and just so easy to get rid of when you see them just use a finger squish them yeah it's fun i'm like just dead the most important trick that i'm giving you right now is that you have to be consistent you have to be committed to deal with thrips because if you lack in just one day or two days it's it's over like your work and your effort and everything that you've done so far you're just going down straight down the drain so yes stay on top of the plan stay on top of the, especially the one that has been infected by threats um, to make sure that you get you got everything you got every single one of them that's my tips for you right there i may have mentioned about spraying them down so guys please be careful when spraying them uh, with especially anol or any sort of chemicals or neem oil they the plants became very sensitive to light so my recommendation is that after 6 or 7 pm when the light is not um, as harsh anymore you can start spraying them and if you use grow light like i do get the plants away from the grow light at least for the whole night and then you can put them back in the morning or so um, so that all the chemicals and the, the you know all the water have evaporated throughout the night so that your plants wouldn't get burned I burn my plants and that's bad now let's talk about um, prevention I know that I did mention about um, the predatory mites earlier it's great it actually does work um, do I notice a huge difference probably you know because they are so small i can't really see them they're not like aureus and that i can see the mites are just like tiny tiny little things so it's so hard for me to know whether it actually works or not but as long as there's no thrips coming back i'm pretty sure that that's what we want and that's what we would consider as yes it's working um predatory mites it's a lot more cost saving because their lifespan is a lot longer and it's a lot cheaper each sachet is only like 25 cents or a little bit less than that and um, you can use it for the whole month a lot of people ask me how long would it last copper just actually confirm if it comes in the sachet that can regenerate so that sachet is like a breeding station for them all the materials that they need is in there and then they just come out from the hole that comes with a sachet and then you know they're just coming out and then get onto your leaves and then hunt for eggs and um, the i believe the larvae stage of thrips they cannot attack the adults so if you have adults unfortunately you have to physically remove them or use aureus or spray them down oh yeah when you use mites don't use spray because obviously you're going to kill the mites as well so yes you can remove them and then spray them down that's what i do or just wipe off the leaves 
And a lot of people ask me, so James, if you're going to use predatory mites, um, how do you tell the difference between them and spider mites? So, spider mites are very different with the, the good mites, I would say. And um, the pale sign would be spider mite is red. If you Google it, you can see the photo of spider mites here red. The tail sign would be web wings. And then you see these little uh, brownie dots all over your leaves, especially if you have a monstera, um, a variegated monstera, which is the elbow one or the elbow syngonium. It's very easy to tell because all the white part would show the bite marks from the spider mites. And um, to treat spider mites, I'm going to talk a little bit about it um, in the next video or maybe the future video. It's so easy, like guys, spider mites is the easiest one. Oh my gosh, so easy to care for. All right, so we already talked. I think I pretty much cover every single thing. Let's talk about what you shouldn't do when dealing with threats. As I mentioned earlier, do not report your plans. Guys, please do not report your plans. Just imagine this. You were on a plane, you flew for like 10, 15 hours, you're exhausted. And then as soon as you get home, someone made you move your house. Imagine that. And that's exactly what's happening to your plants as well. They've been attacked by thrips. You spray them and then you take them out of the pot. You wash all the roots. That's a lot of stress for the poor plant to go through at a single short amount of time. So don't do it. It's not gonna work. It honestly wouldn't work. The second tip is do not rely on anything. Don't assume or rely on any single item. The Aureus worked, but because I relied on it, and that was my fault, um, it came back and bite me. So I shouldn't have relied on it solely. I should have trusted myself by checking the plants constantly. At least I would have found out uh, that the population came back. So, and don't rely on spray because, you know, it's so hard to spray on every single thing, especially if your plant is very bushy and lushy, or the new buds or the new growth. You cannot get into that. And as I mentioned, thrips scrape the tissues of the leaves and then they lay the eggs in there. So how are you getting the chemicals inside the tissues? It almost is like impossible to rely on just spray. And that's why I like Aureus because you know, they are bugs. So they know what the other bugs are like so that they can hunt for them. Did I mention that Aureus eat all the stages of threats? Eggs, larvae, pupa, the adults, everything. Third tip that you may not like, do not try to save a plant that is already far gone. Honestly, learn from my mistake. I have this beautiful neon pothos that I really love and then I didn't pay much attention to it. It got infected by thrips. Now the funny thing is that the front of the potho looks great, but then the back of it, oh my gosh, it looks horrendous. It looks so sad. And then all the new growth is just like very wonky. It's just not right. And I didn't notice that until I actually checked the back of the potho because I, I got it hanging from the wall. Checked the back and then it was covered in thrips. So I threw it out. I tried to save it, but the more I tried to save it, the worse thrips problem got. So then I had to throw it out. Does it mean that you're gonna throw out your elbow monstera? Absolutely not. Don't do it, guys. I mean, I don't think anyone would do it. They're so expensive. Or your Thai constellation, the price is just like going up so much. You can definitely save your plant, uh, your valuable uh, plant or some plant that you have such sentimental feelings and attached to it, you can save it, but you just have to really stay on top of it is what I'm saying. If it's a cheap plant, just throw it out. It's not worth it because you always can replace it with another plant later on. And the last but not least is that do not panic. Don't panic or feel sad when you see thrips. That was me. Oh my God, you have no idea. I would say I'm a little bit of a very uh, drama queen. But anyway, when I noticed thrips, I was so upset. Reading from everyone's experience, reading the comments, watching YouTube, how they deal with thrips. I'm just like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? Now, this is a good time to actually have thrips, I would say, because obviously we are under quarantine, there's not much going on. So you have a lot of time to be on top of your plans. I love sitting down and just wipe off the leaves. I don't know about you, for me, that actually very zen, very relaxing for me. And um, I love doing it. I don't have any problem doing it. So yeah, I should have done that actually a lot more. Right now, I tried, well, right now I have the Aureus. I just re re released the Aureus just last week. So I'm not gonna do it this week. I'm not gonna do it next week. But may maybe the end of next week, I'm gonna start uh, wiping off the leaves again.
All right, so here's my package um, that I got from the company. And um, let me just open this real quick. <coughs> Oh, perfect. Sorry, I have to change the angle because the lighting was a little bit funny. So here's my receipt that I ordered from. And yes, so it's covered. And this would be the um, Spiker Plus. So this would, this would be great for spider mite issues. Um, I don't have any spider mites problem right now, so I'm not going to open this because I actually ordered this for my client. Um, I'm just going to leave this here for him so he can pick it up later. And this is the one that I'm going to do, that I'm going to need. So it's very nice, um, insulated. And just let me open this box real quick. Right. So right in here we have like something called like an ice pack, which is kind of nice. Another ice pack here. And then this is what we want. Um, gripper. I just call it Oreos. There you go. You can see them crawling around. Yep. There's one crawling out right now. And let me walk around and I'm gonna show you how I apply this to my collection. All right, cool. So this is what I use, you guys. And um, basically these are little, um, I don't know, muffin trays or basically the pastry uh, tray. The, the smaller, the better. And it usually comes in like a big pack and I, ju I just basically reuse them because I know I'm going to have to apply multiple times. So to be a little bit more active now. So what I usually do is I basically just pour this out like so. Yep, it's like a bunch of them. And what I do is I basically just leave it on top of the plant like that. Uh, hang on, let me see. Yep, something like that, a little bit more secure. And the thing about this is, now you definitely can just pour it directly onto the plants. It's just a little bit messy once it's done and you're gonna clean it up. My high, uh, my recommendation is that do not take this out off the plant for at least two weeks once the plants are still alive. The reason being is because these are food for them. Now, in case if they don't find thrips or any insects to eat, this will keep them alive. So I noticed that I got some thrip problem with my succulent, that little thing there. So I'm just gonna leave it a little bit there as well. And then I'm just gonna go around and do the exact same thing, which I'm not gonna bore you with. And I'm gonna show you the final result. Okay, as you can see, they are super small, so it's extremely difficult for me to focus on. But I catch this guy is basically already on a leaf. So right here, guys, and there's one, and then there's another one. Okay, so here we are in my bedroom where all the magic happens. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> um, here, this begonia is beautiful. It's so lushy. Thrips love this. They love this kind of young leaves, especially the unfurl one. So the ones kind of like a bud like this. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. I try to smile a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I hope I hope it doesn't look like crazy. Bye. Have a great time.